Suppose there's a lone American hidden among a crowd of Canadians. How do you pick him out? Well, that's easy. You look for the guy with the handgun. This also works with dragons. In Extant Dragonhood, they come in three basic geographic distributions. There is the Chinese dragon, which tends to be long, snake-like, and now and then you'll find one belting fire. Then there is the European dragon that is generally shorter, more reptile-like instead of a snake-like, and they often have wings. Now and then you'll find a species that belches fire. Finally, the North American dragon is usually a feathered snake, or if you're talking United States, you'll find dragons with tattoos and lean cuisine. All dragons have morphological characters in common. When human beings see these characters in an organism, they know that it belongs to the dragon family. I should note that um, human demarcation among species is arbitrary. Human beings pick out features from species and say, this is a dragon, or this is a bird, or this is a reptile. There is no such clear-cut demarcation among nature. It is human beings who say, for example, that every extant species now existing with feathers is a bird. Um, birdness is a human uh, convention and not a nature convention. Same is true with dragons. And therein lies the topic of this video, geographic distribution of species. Geographic distribution of species is one evidence for the existence of evolution having occurred. Charles Darwin discovered this in the Galapagos. When Charles Darwin came back from the South Pacific, and specifically the Galapagos Islands, his specimen collection was a horrible mess. He was not a very good record keeper. Fortunately, he labeled most of his specimens. Uh, some of the labels came off, however, and moths got other specimens. He hired somebody to straighten it all out, and that person did an excellent job. Uh, when Charles Darwin saw the ordered specimens, he noted that uh, species appeared to have a geographical distribution, meaning species were specific to specific islands in the Galapagos. This was uh, his first um, inclination on how um, speciation occurred. Uh, geographic isolation uh, speeds up speciation. When a species population splits off, one is considered the parent population when it stays in a specific geographic location. The daughter population goes to another geographic position. Natural selection continues to work on both populations throughout time. If there is no selective pressure, the populations will stay the same species. If the environment changes for either population, the, the population either perishes or it changes to fit the new environment. This is generally what natural selection does. Note that over time, natural selection will change the population. It could be the parent one or the daughter one. Eventually, the change accumulates so that the two populations are no longer interfertile. That means one of the populations has speciated. This is called allopatric speciation. And of course, it occurred to dragons. What Charles Darwin saw in his specimens was one can look at a specimen and know which island it came from. One can also do this with dragons, of course, because dragons evolved. This here is a Chinese dragon, which one can clearly see, because it has features that only Chinese dragons have. This, of course, is a European dragon, because it has European dragon features. One can look at the species of dragon and know where, geographically, they most likely came from. 
And of course, every uh, American dragon either has a pistol or wears a size XL. This geographic distribution of species is an excellent example of evidence showing that evolution has occurred. By inference, one can also say that geographic distribution is evidence that evolution is still occurring. One can posit that a god or gods did the di geographic distribution by modifying a basic plan and scattering them throughout the earth. Why gods would do that and make people believe that the species evolved is, of course, a mystery, at least it is to me. One can test geographic distribution oneself. Here we have a dragon. Based upon its characteristics, where would you say it most likely came from geographically? That species most likely came from Europe. Of course, one cannot rule out Disneyland or Hollywood. And this specimen, where would one expect to have found this specimen if one did not know where it came from? Or this specimen, if one had no idea where it was found, one can compare it with other specimens and have a good idea. Or even this dragon, if one looks at it and has no idea where it came from, one can get a pretty good idea by comparing it with other examples of known located fossils or extant species. Obviously, since phenotypes, that is, the morphological observations of species, was modified geographically, one also must expect genetics to show that um, distribution also, and of course it does. Not only DNA sequencing, but also DNA mapping shows modifications based upon geographic distribution. This is also an excellent example of evidence supporting the fact that evolution has occurred. Of course, creationists, the best they can do is deny the fact. And I suppose they could stomp their little feet and demand funding from their followers to prove this wrong. Of course, so far, they have not been able to. And by golly, I wish them lots of luck trying.